Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, if you are a recurring viewer or a subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. I really appreciate you all being here today. I have been absent from the channel for a couple of weeks now, and I am finally back to being able to sit down and film a video, so I'm very excited for that. Um, I have still been reading during my time away from the channel, so I have a decent amount of books to talk about. I also have today a decent stack that I would like to haul for you. I have not been buying a whole lot of books this year, and then over the last couple of months or so, my buying habits have sort of crept back up into my life, and this is a combination of sort of in-person book shopping as well as online book shopping. I really want to do most of my shopping in person. However, I don't have that many uh, bookstores, either used or sort of uh, larger chain bookstores near me. And so most of my shopping falls to using um, online platforms like, like Thrift Books or eBay, occasionally Amazon if the pricing is good. Uh, but I have sort of a stack here, co uh, a combination of some of the purchases that I have made over just the last little bit that I would like to haul for you. And uh, these are all uh, historical nonfiction, sort of a mix of Soviet history and then U.S. Uh, sort of um, early to mid 19th and 20th century history. Um, so some, some pretty interesting titles here. And the first one that I want to show you is one that I have um, started reading and it's my current book uh, that's going right now for me this weekend. And that is Anna of All the Russias, A Life of Anna Akhmatova by Elaine Feinstein. And this is about the uh, Soviet era poet Anna Akhmatova, who is um, uh, one of my favorite uh, Russian poets. I have read a, a decent bit of her work, but really nothing about her personal life. And so I saw this on the shelf at a local uh, used bookstore and I was just immediately drawn to it and picked it up. I have not read anything else by Elaine Feinstein either. So this is going to be a wonderful uh, sort of excursion for me, both into the life of Anna Akhmatova and then into Elaine Feinstein's writing as well. Uh, I am just just uh, starting into chapter two, so I'm on page 23, very much at the very beginning. I just sat down, down for a couple of minutes this morning um, and started it. I'm hoping to finish it in the next couple of days, and then depending on how that reading experience goes for me and what I uh, sort of glean from the reading experience uh, will dictate whether or not this gets a dedicated video, but it will certainly get a shout out whenever I finish it in a, a weekend reading update or just an update video in general. Uh, so that's that's the first book uh, that I am hauling. Uh, then the next is Stalin's Daughter, The Extraordinary and Tumultuous Life of Svetlana Alyeva. And I'm sure I just said her last name uh, incorrectly. If you know it, please correct me in the comments down below uh, by Rosemary Sullivan. Uh, this is another one that I picked up um, in person at a uh, at my local uh, used bookstore. And this is one that's been on my Goodreads TBR for about two and a half years. Um, and I've just been sort of waiting to find a copy. I wasn't able to find a copy online originally when I wanted to read it. Um, and it was one that sort of I had forgotten about and sort of fell off the, uh, the, the, the wagon. And then I saw it on the shelf and it sort of triggered me remembering that I had wanted to read this a long time ago. Um, so I'm, I'm really curious. I've read really nothing about Stalin's personal life and certainly nothing about his family's personal life. Um, and so this is a, this is one that I'm hoping will sort of shine light um, onto both of those themes for me. And I have a couple other Soviet era slash Stalin related books uh, here in this stack. It's, it's a subject I'm trying to educate myself more thoroughly in. Uh, next, uh, keeping in line with uh, so, uh, some Soviet history specifically related uh, to Stalin and sort of the life of, of uh, individuals in Soviet Russia, I have Stalin, The Court of the Red Tsar by Simon Sebag Matsafiori. This is one uh, that I have been wanting to read for a very long time, and uh, obviously it's qu it's quite a chunker, so I've, I've been slightly put off by its length, just trying to fit it in between some of my other reading projects I have going on. However, now that sort of Soviet history is one of my reading projects, I can slip it in a little bit easier. And this is one that I have um, the first book, Young Stalin, that I want to read before I read this because they do kind of work in order. Um, sort of treating this as my as my main uh, source material for trying to 
learn a little bit more about the, the Soviet era. Uh, Simon Sebag Montefiore wrote one of my favorite books about uh, the Romanovs, and uh, it's literally just called The Romanovs, and it is excellent. I love his writing style. I love sort of his approach to history and the way that he presents his material. I find him incredibly readable, very entertaining. Um, so I'm sure I'm going to love this, and based off of what I have read um, reviews and such, and what I've heard, I know it's it's going to be a really great read. I'm not sure if this is going to be uh, this month or not. I may put this into next month or further down into the fall. I'm not quite sure, but it's definitely one that I'm excited about, and I've moved to my sort sort of to my TBR shelf um, so that I make sure to pick it up and not forget about it again. Uh, next, uh, we have the Whisperers. Private Life in Stalin's Russia by Orlando Figes. Orlando Figes is one of my favorite authors. Uh, Natasha's Dance, which is credited uh, here on the cover, was a book that I read um, earlier this year and absolutely loved sort of a cultural history of Russia. It was very illuminating for me, uh, really had some very interesting um, uh, information that I really hadn't been aware of before. Um, so I'm really interested in this one of just sort of a personal look uh, or, or look at the personal lives of those living in the incredibly oppressive Stalinist regime. Uh, so this is one that, again, I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, later in the fall or in the winter or even push into next year, but whenever I do read it, I'm sure I will be talking about it more. Uh, oh, bump the camera there. The stack is ever, ever growing. Uh, I'll move these over here. Uh, the next book that I have is a um, uh, a look at the sort of the personal lives, the uh, individual lives of members of the Red Army during uh, World War II, and that's Ivan's War, Life and Death in the Red Army, 1939 to 1945 by Catherine Merridale. Uh, this is one that I got a couple weeks ago in person, and I actually have already read it. Um, I read it, just uh, finished it a couple days ago, and it was incredibly interesting. Um, I have read very little about the uh, sort of the, the Russian side of World War II from a Russian perspective, especially sort of not realizing a lot of what went into their 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 aspect of the war particularly how it affected the immense uh, sort of farmer surf uh, agricultural population of russia if you will and so this was incredibly illuminating to the war's impact on the everyday russian and sort of the immense sacrifice and the immense uh, turmoil and 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 sort of um, destruction that occurred in so many people's lives who really didn't have any direct connection with the war, but sort of were just um, uh, unlucky in in their in their birth, in their in in where they lived, in their social class, and what they had to what they were required to do during the war years. So this was a great read. I also listened to the audiobook for this one, so I flipped between the audio and the uh, physical text. Um, so it only took me about three or four days to read. It was it was pretty quick. Uh, but Catherine Meridale pulls from a lot of interviews that she conducted, um, I believe, in the early 90s. So there are a lot of firsthand accounts um, sort of scattered throughout this, as well as a lot of... Um, uh, pictures sort of scattered throughout, which I really like instead of just having that one sort of picture glossary in the middle of the book, like uh, a history books typically do. So that was a really nice sort of a layout decision. But uh, Ivan's War, Life and Death in the Red Army, 1939 to 1945 by Catherine Merridale. Then um, uh, scooting over to American history, I have Amanda Foreman's A World on Fire, Britain's Cru uh crucial role in the American Civil War. This has been on my uh, Goodreads TBR for quite a while as well, and I've had the ebook on my Kindle, uh, but I wanted a physical copy as well to switch between the ebook and the physical copy. I don't know why, but I really enjoy having my books in multiple formats if possible. My favorite combination is to have the physical book, the ebook, and the audiobook from my library so that then really whatever whatever format I want to use I have available because I love taking my Kindle with me when I go out and about 
audiobooks are great for driving. And then when I'm home, I really do love having a physical book to read. And this is an absolute brick. So I'm glad that I will also have the ebook because I sh absolutely do not want to be dragging this around with me places. Uh, this book was really uh, interesting to me just because, first of all, I don't have a, a huge knowledge base on the American Civil War, but then I certainly do not on this sort of brief episode of Britain's involvement in the Civil War. And so I am very hopeful that this is going to be able to teach me a whole lot. Um, it's also just a very attractive book. I, I really thought the cover design, sort of using the fire and the stars to simulate the flag was really interesting. Um, but this is one that when I, uh, when I do read about it, I'm hoping to sort of then be led to some other books on the same topic. Um, I have read a little bit about the Civil War period from the British perspective in some of my reading on Queen Victoria and her court. Um, but I haven't read nothing sort of dedicated to this uh, period of the Civil War. So I'm very interested in this book. Uh, then I have uh, Francis Russell's Adams, an American Dynasty, and sort of just a, a, a look at the American, you know, the political family, the Adams family, uh, starting with uh, John Adams and then sort of trickling down through uh, to, to Henry Adams and sort of the, um, the, the power that they uh, wielded in the founding of the country and then further you know, into the the 19th and 20th centuries. Uh, so I'm very interested in this one. Um, sticking with the Adams uh, family, I have The Education of Henry Adams uh, with an introduction by Edmund Morris. And this is put out by uh, uh, Modern Library. And uh, this is one that I have a paperback copy of The Education of Henry Adams, but I saw this uh, hard copy a modern library available at a local bookstore and I had to get it as well because I love modern library. But also when I see a, a great hardback like this, it's really hard to pass up, especially when it was $3. Uh, then I have uh, Louisa, The Extraordinary Life of Miss Adams uh, by Louisa Thomas. And this is a book that I have already read. I read this actually about two years ago, got it from the library. And uh, when I saw it, I just wanted to pick it up because I wanted to, you know, be able to add it to my collection. I remember really enjoying it. And I may go back and give this one a reread as well, because I'm not sure I fully, um, I fully pulled everything out of it the first time I read it, just because I was pretty young. Uh, then I have The Last American Aristocrat, The Brilliant Life and Improbable Education of Henry Adams. So this ties back into the education of Henry Adams. I wanted to know more about Henry Adams, learn more about him. So I thought I would read um, The Last American Aristocrat and then read The, edu um, the Education of Henry Adams because this is, um, I guess I sh I'll show the cover. Uh, this is both a biography of Henry Adams and then it's also sort of a, a work of history about Henry Adams's book. So it's it's sort of it's, it's sort of both. There's a portion of the writing that's dedicated to telling the story of Henry Adams and there's a portion talking about Henry Adams's writings, which I thought was really interesting. This is another one that I I I got a couple weeks ago and then I basically read it right after I got it. Um it was it was very uh, engrossing and I read it I think in just maybe 2 days. It's also not very long. I think it's right under um it's right under 300 pages. So it's not very long at all, but just reading about Henry Adams's life was incredibly fascinating. His uh, the his immense social circle and the incredibly um, important and powerful prestigious figures that resided within that circle was astounding to me. The sort of the extent of his travels as well, um, his sort of just the all encompassing story of his life is so interesting, and I'm very excited to read the education. Um, just to sort of get his own perspective and see his life through his lens as well, which I think is going to sort of change a couple of the episodes, I'm sure, getting that more personal look. Uh, but I'm really excited for that. And this was great, and I would highly recommend this one as well for anyone wanting to know a little bit more about Henry Adams. I also think this is fairly new. I think it came out in 2020, so just, just a couple of years old. Um, let me see. 2020. So I was very surprised that this was at a used uh, a used bookstore, and it's in great condition as well. So I was really happy for that find. Uh, and then last but not least, I have Russia Against Napoleon, The True Story of the Campaigns of War and Peace by Dominic Levin. I decided to pick this up from uh, Thrift Books. 
um, after finishing it on my Kindle, just because I I wanted to have a physical representation of the book. Anytime I read a book on Kindle that I really, really love, I will go ahead if I can and get a physical copy, particularly for reference, just because I feel that just being able to flip through a book um, and jump between large chunks quickly is so much easier to do with a physical copy than it is with the Kindle. Um, and so especially for sort of a book that I know I will be going back to to open up to try to find a, a specific passage or a specific piece of information, it's just a lot easier to have the physical book. And so I picked, uh, I picked this up. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic when I read it. Um, and I definitely want to read this sort of as a companion piece to reading War and Peace as well, which is a Russian classic that I have not yet fully tackled. Um, I have started it on a couple of occasions, so my plan is to give this a reread whenever I do decide to read a War and Peace, so then I can have the uh, historical backing for the novel as well. And that is the last of the haul. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below if you would like, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now, and happy reading.